Good day. This is Russell Hawley at the Tate Geological Museum here at Casper College in Wyoming. And today I'm going to talk to you about something that you may have for years thought was a dinosaur, but actually is not. If you buy a plastic bag or tube of toy dinosaurs and dump them all out on the floor, you'll have a bunch of dinosaur uh, models. However, one of these things is not a dinosaur. Can you spot it? Do you know which one it is? It's not the Tyrannosaurus. He's really a dinosaur. Stegosaurus, Triceratops, those are dinosaurs. But almost every bag or tube of dinosaur toys includes one of these guys. And this is actually not a dinosaur at all. Does anybody know its name? That's right, Demetrodon. And Demetrodon is not a dinosaur. Well, you might ask, a pretty uh, reasonable question. Why isn't it a dinosaur? What disqualifies it from dinosaurhood? Well, uh, once again, as is so often the case with uh, these reptiles and their classification, it comes down to holes in the head. Dinosaurs are diapsids. They have two pairs of holes in the skull behind the eye socket. Uh, the tuatara, the little lizard-like beast of New Zealand that looks a bit like a lizard, it's a diapsid too. And like a dinosaur, it has a pair of holes on top of the skull there and there, the supertemporal fenestri, and then a temporal fenestra low on the skull on either side behind the eye socket. So that's the diapsid skull condition. And this is what you will see in lizards. This is what you will see in alligators and crocodiles. It's what you see in dinosaurs as well. But what about Demetrodon? Well, let's have a look at the Demetrodon skull. So there is the Demetrodon skull. There's the eye socket and there's the nostril. But behind the eye socket, uh, the Demetrodon does not have two pairs of holes like a good diapsid. Instead, it's just got one pair of holes low in the side of the skull um, behind the eye socket. That's the temporal fenestra, but up above, look mom, no supratemporal fenestri. So this is not a diapsid. What is it? It's a synapsid. And it, in the time of Demetrodon, there were many, many different species of uh, four-footed land-dwelling creatures that all had that same arrangement, the synapsid skull condition of a single pair of openings behind the eye, low on the skull. And it's interesting because this is an arrangement you also see in modern mammals. This is a skull of a mammal. This is an extinct oreodont, but if you look at the skull of a living mammal, it'll show you the same pattern. Eye socket, and then behind that, uh, there is a lower temporal fenestra, and there's the other lower temporal fenestra. So in terms of holes in the head, the skull of Demetrodon is actually more mammal-like than it is like the skull of a reptile or another dinosaur. There's another way in which Demetrodon is leaning towards a mammal-like condition, and that is the possession of heterodont teeth. If you look at a typical reptile, like say our friend Sid, the Komodo dragon here, you'll see that the teeth are all pretty much the same uh, size and certainly the same shape. In mammals, however, a dog, for example, we've got now, does anybody remember the names of the different kinds of teeth we've got here? We've got the incisors for cutting in the front, stabbing canines behind that, shearing premolars, yep, behind that, and then crushing molars in the very back. Now, what do we have in Demetrodon here? Well, we've got some slicing teeth up in the front here, and then behind that, some long stabbing teeth that probably functioned much like the canines of a modern dog. And then, and you can see this best in the lower jaw, at the very back, we've got some very low chopping and shredding teeth, uh, good for processing food once its prey had already been killed or subdued. So they don't look like dog teeth just yet, but we're getting a lean towards that heterodont uh, condition. 
And indeed, Dimetrodon and its relatives are uh, closely related to the sorts of creatures that eventually would give rise to mammals, uh, including ourselves. One more thing about Dimetrodon that can't be overlooked is this spectacular for, uh, fin or sail on its back. This is made out of very long spines growing out of the vertebrae and probably in life webbed together with skin uh, to make a fin. It's misleadingly similar to the fin that you see on the back of a Spinosaurus, but it's not a Spinosaurus. It's not even related to Spinosaurus. It is its own thing. It is a mammal-like synapsid. And what exactly that fin was used for has been a source of debate for almost a century. Some people think that it might have been a radiator to help it dump excess heat in the environment, or it might have been a solar panel for collecting uh, heat in the morning to help it warm up its blood and get an early start on the day. Personally, I think it was mostly for display, either to make it look more attractive to females or to make it look bigger and scarier to rival males.